The racial hatred of the Ku Klux Klan and its supporters provided the catalyst for many African Americans to express their feelings through the arts. The Harlem Renaissance was a cultural explosion. It coincided with the massive northern migration of African Americans looking for new industrial jobs. In 1925, writer Alan Locke coined the ideological term, the New Negro Movement. His belief was that racial advancement through aesthetic exploits would eventually lead to political and economic action. It was during this time that a former busboy turned poet, Langston Hughes, penned his first volume of verse entitled, The Weary Blues. His self-realizations captured the feelings and moods of many African Americans. In Negro Speaks of Rivers, Hughes writes, I've known rivers. I've known rivers ancient as the world and older than the flow of human blood in human veins. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. I've bathed in the Euphrates when dawns were young. I built my hut near the Congo and it lulled me to sleep. I looked upon the Nile and raised the pyramids above it. I heard the singing of the Mississippi when Abe Lincoln went down to New Orleans, and I've seen its muddy bosom turn all golden in the sunset. I've known rivers, ancient dusky rivers. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. Gene Toomer, Claude McKay, Zora Neale Hurston, and County Cullen were other writers who helped define the Harlem Renaissance with their beautiful words. Visual arts were represented by Lois Maylou Jones, William H. Johnson, and Palmer Hayden, whose works reflected struggle and pride. On stage, actor and activist Paul Robeson captivated audiences in the title role of William Shakespeare's Othello. Starlet Josephine Baker sang and danced into the hearts of America in Shuffle Along, one of the first plays written, produced, and directed by African Americans. The most popular aspect of the Harlem Renaissance was the emergence of jazz music. <laughs> 